Hey everyone, it's Arda. Today I'm here with a fun light up dance floor card using some goodies from MFT Stamps and some easy lights from Pear Blossom Press. I can't wait to show you how easy it is to make these a fun part of your cards. This video is a hop featuring the easy lights and there are a number of videos for you to watch and see how easy they are to work with. The link to the next video plus all the details of the hop and the instructions for the giveaway are in my video description below. So be sure to check that out. First, I'll give you a quick lesson on how to use these easy lights. If you've seen it already, you can skip ahead to see how I use them. The lights come in a pack of five, along with five batteries. You literally just snap one of them off the row, insert the battery, and then press the little purple button and they light up. Let's watch that again. Snap. Insert. Light. It's literally that simple. For my card, I'm going to use both these sets of lights, so I have six lights in total. I'm going to make a light up dance floor with this cover plate die from MFT Stamps. I love it because you can easily trim it down to be a square. I'm going to cover one of the squares with the black cutout for my dancing penguin and the rectangle with white for my sentiment. I just used some tape on the back to hold these two pieces in place in the frame. Next, I pulled out some colored vellum that I had in my stash. I have yellow, some aqua, and some red, and I want to cut squares to cover those holes in the dance floor. I cut them slightly bigger than the square cutouts with the plan of taping them in place in the back. And this is where I'll tell you the first thing I would do differently another time. This frame is very narrow, and that made this card design a little trickier in a number of ways than if it had had wider frames. So first, I had to tape the squares of vellum to the frame without the tape showing through the window. That isn't difficult, but it is a bit fiddly and time consuming. I could have cut the colored squares slightly bigger to make them easier to work with, but that narrow frame means there's not a lot of flexibility. So here's my dance floor, and I'm going to stamp my sentiment before I go any further. I used this Commence the Happy Dance sentiment from MFT's Party Penguins. I had to cut it to fit in my white rectangle panel, and then I used my Mini Misty and VersaFine Onyx ink to stamp it. Then I stamped one of the penguins. This time I used Gina K ink to stamp the black, just because it dries a little bit faster than that VersaFine ink. Next, I die cut the penguin. Each penguin has another stamp with his beak and feet, so you can use another color to stamp it, but it's easier to get them in the right place if you're stamping onto the die cut. I used my Misty again and Tiki Torch ink this time. I think this is a genius design. Next, I made another little error in judgment. I got all excited about putting this guy on a wobbler on the front of the card, but having that bulk made it harder to work with the panel. I keep hoping I'm going to learn some patience someday, but it hasn't happened yet. And now it's time to attach the lights. This is actually the easiest part. You just separate the three lights and tape them to your card design where you want them. I placed them so that there was one in one row and two in the other. I taped them so that the tape was behind the solid panels in the middle of the card, with the wire and light sticking up into each window. This means that you can see the wire through the colored vellum, and I thought of a fix for that, and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Next, I attached the battery pack. I used some adhesive tape to try and hold it into place so I knew exactly where the switch was, and I wrapped the wires around. Then I did the same thing with my next set of lights, filling in the other three windows and placing the switch so that it's on the other end of the white panel. This means there will be two places to push, and each switch will light up three of the six lights. I gently pushed all the wires into the center of the card, and I added a final piece of tape to hold it in place. There's a lot of wires because I used two sets of lights, but it still works because I had plenty of room behind that solid row. Next, I used some foam strips to build up some dimension around the black frame to allow for the thickness of the battery packs. And again, the narrowness of that frame made it a bit fiddly. Obviously, I don't want the foam tape showing out the sides, so I flipped it over to check and correct my placement where necessary. And once I had all that foam tape on and I had given it a final test, I put it onto a white card base. So here's how I would make it easier next time. I would cut a square of white vellum, just slightly smaller than that big black frame, and I would adhere it to the back of the black frame. 
I would cut the colored vellum with the die and inlay the squares onto the white vellum. This would not only save me a lot of the fiddly taping, but it might make the wires less noticeable through the windows when the card isn't lit up. I think this card is so fun. Having two sets of lights and switches means that you can alternate the lights and the penguin can just dance the night away. I hope you like my dance floor. There are a number of small things I would change in my design now that I've made this card once, but the easy lights themselves are just that, easy and such a fun addition to a card. Product links are below and on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.